Okay, so let's take a look. Um, so this one's a little bit fuzzy. Because um, she's not necessarily claiming that there's a difference. Um, she might be claiming that there isn't a difference. It's really sort of vague, right? So you could make an argument either way that she's claiming there is a difference or she wants to see there's a difference because she's claiming there isn't a difference. It's sort of a, you could make an argument that she's H0 or H1 in this one. In this case, you can say either way. Um, but difference would be that the proportions are not the same. So if um, there is a difference, that means that your H1 would be your claim. If they're the same, then you claim then your H your claim would be H naught. Not that makes any more sense. Does that, does that help your does that answer your question or not so much? So oh, we'll is it then also saying our claim is H one? You could argue either one. You can either say that um so they argued that she said they were different. They're not the same, that they're, it's related to the gender. Preference is related, right? They're different. It's related to the gender. In other words, uh, her, her preference, her statement would be, her claim would be that it's not the same between men and women. And here it is. The issue not is that they are the same. It's independent of whether you're male or female. It doesn't matter. They're the same. And then H1 would be they're not the same. It depends upon whether you're male or female. It's dependent. Um, so that would be for the homework. Again, for the exam, you can just put O sub i equals E sub i, and O sub i is not equal to E sub i. That's fine. But on the homework, it's only going to give you it's only going to give you one that makes sense for for what your claim could be. It wouldn't say it wouldn't give you sports preference is related to the gender of the person, and also give you Sports preference is dependent upon the gender of the person. It wouldn't give you both of those. It would only give you one of them. If that makes any sense. It's gonna. There's only gonna be one that should make sense. That should match up with what you're looking for. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I know that wasn't. You'll see when you go through it. Um, and you have to kind of just play with it. I think a little bit. You do get multiple choices, chances at it. Um, so make use of that. Everybody knows that, right? If 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 it if it doesn't work out, you can always pick it. Pick a new one. All right, so first find your critical value. And again, if you just did this, O sub i equals E sub i, and O sub i now equals E sub i for your H naught and H1 for the exam, then that's totally going to be fine. Step two, find the critical value. All right, I had two rows, so two minus one is one, two, three columns, so three minus one is two, so I'm going to get a degrees of freedom of two. I'm going to look that up with alpha is 0.05 because it didn't say, right? If it doesn't say, that it should be 0.05. Yep, yeah, it doesn't say, so it's 0.05. And I'm going to get, I if I was, um, and you're going to get 5.991. So you would pop in here and put in 5.991 for your critical value and shade to the right. Um, step three, you need to find your expected value. So I need you to find the first one, E11, and the last one, which is row two, column three, E23. Expected value for the second row, third column. So the first one was my row total 32 times my column total 38 divided by 80, so 15.2. This one is going to be my row total and my column total, so 48 times 16, or 16 times 48, doesn't matter what order they're in, divided by 80, 9.6. These just find separately and leave them alone. This just, they just prove to me you know how to find them. Because in the old days, you'd find all six of them and then do the whole formula. So just find them, leave them alone, you're done with that. Because it demonstrates you know, you know how to find the expected value, what you expected to get. So I observed 12, I expected 9.6. Here I observed 18, I expected 15.2. So normally you, know, you do 15, 18 minus 15.2 squared divided by 15.2, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to let the calculator do that for us. So you're going to throw this into your list, I mean into your matrix. Second matrix, edit, 
and I want a two by three, two by three, and you pop them in there. All right, 18, 10, 4, 20, 16, 12. Good. And then you did stat test up to chi squared test. Boom. Those all stay the same. Calculate. And you got your chi squared is 2.385, which is be a 5 after that. Um, and your p value is 0 0.303. So it's totally common. 30%, that's way common. So we're not going to reject H naught. Um, and then and degrees of freedom too, which is what we found earlier. So that's a good double check of your degrees of freedom. All right, so this should probably have a five on the end. And then um, we're going to not reject the null hypothesis because if you pop it into your thing down here, you're going to see it's totally not in the guilty range. Right. Or you could say this, either one. Um, but really, it's, it's, you know, the picture is the easiest way. You guys are used to that. It's all good. Um, so we're going to do not reject the null hypothesis. So there is not enough evidence to, and you can either say reject the claim that the proportions are equal, or you could say support the claim that sports preference is related to gender. Either one's fine. Okay. So we need to move on. Um, homogeneity of proportions is a similar type of test. Again, it's the same basic test. It's just saying the proportions are equal, which is the same thing as saying they're independent. So really, it's just it's the wording in the claim that will differ. That's all. And um, we will do some of those examples next class. But for right now, we're going to skip the next page. So flip the page. This is the one you're turning in today, the one we just finished. Skip the next page. We're going to do that next class. And so we're going to go to notes 11.3. Right, so notes 11.3 is what we're working on now. We're going to work on this one. So bust it out. And let's do this. Why do I not have people here? Hmm. Okay. Um, how about uh, Rizzo? Go ahead and read. Give me one second. Let me pull my notes out. So sorry. Oh, that's right. Um, Haley, in the meantime, why don't you read? When comparing more than two means, the teeth test should not be used. This section introduces the teeth test. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mean is different from the others, you can just put at least one differs. That's fine. 
this is just you reading. You are not writing anything in. It's just we're going down this first page of notes here, emphasizing stuff. Um, if there's no difference between the means, then the between group variants will be about the same as the within group variants, and we do not reject null hypothesis. So if those are about the same, about one, when you do that ratio, then we do not re reject null hypothesis. However, when the me means this differ a lot, then the between group variants will be a lot larger than the within group variants, and we reject the null hypothesis. And I'll um, talk to you guys more about that next class, but um, you know, we wanna, I want to make sure you guys get the basics of this first today. Um, and then obviously since variances, variances are being compared, this is called the analysis A-N of O variance, the ANOVA, ANOVA. All right, so here's the test stat. Um, it's the F statistic. I will not make you compute it, um, except for um, I'll ask you to find it on the exam, and it's just as simple as this. It is the variance between groups divided by the variance within groups. It's that ratio, and we'll talk about that more next class. But on the exam, I will give you the between group variance and the within group variance. It won't be called this the variance between groups. It might be called, probably called between group variance, within group variance. Um, and I'll also give you other stuff to confuse you, like alpha, um, N1, N2, N3, and um, X bar 1, X bar 2, X bar, I don't know, some other stuff, just to kind of throw you off. And then ask you to find the S. All you got to do is take the between group variance and divide by the within group variance. That's it. That is it. Easiest to, I can't remember, it's two or three points on the exam. It's even easier than the other one where, where you pick out the uh, correlation values. So it's just checking your basic knowledge. Super simple, super straightforward. So you should write that down. Actually, it's not written down for you. You should circle it. It's right here towards like the bottom three-fourths of the way down in big bold letters, F equals variance between groups divided by variance within groups. All right, key concept. Right. So remember, a small p-value, 5% or less, for example, would be unusual. When we get something unusual, we reject the null hypothesis. So we're going to reject null hypothesis when our p-value is small, less than alpha, less than or equal to alpha, equal or less than alpha. When p-value is larger, more than alpha, then we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. It's not unusual. So make sure you kind of wrap your heads around that because for ANOVA, we are not going to give you yet another table. I felt like you have three tables already. That is plenty of tables. You don't need yet another table. So since this is just one section, we're just going to use p-values for this one section because you have enough experience with p-values now to kind of wrap your heads around it just fine, I think. Okay. Just remember that small p-value means it's unusual. Um, and then um, we're going to use TI-8384s to find the p-value from the display, and then if the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, reject the null hypothesis. It's unusual. If p-value is larger than alpha, then it's not unusual. You do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so fairly straightforward there, hopefully. Um, and then please note that all we can say is one of them differs, not which one differs. We can't say which particular one, just that one of them differs. All right, here's an example. Good. So um, here is um, an IQ scores. So we have low blood level, medium blood level, high blood level. And you can see here's a bunch of low blood level people. Here's a bunch of some mediums. Here's some highs. They're not, the lists aren't even the same sizes. This is a really big list. And these are smaller lists. They don't have to be the same size to compare the lists. That's okay. But I'm comparing three things, low, medium, and high blood levels. My alpha is 0.05. So my H0 is going to be, I have three things to compare, right? Low, medium, high, so mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3. Mu That's my H0. H1 is at least one differs. So this is our, is this an example we're doing? Nope. This is just me showing you guys. You don't have to write anything down. Just pay attention. Step two, super easy. Write down alpha. Alpha is 0.05. Done. That's your step two. Step three we're going to find your p-value using your TI calculator. And when you do, um, in this case, we found that the p-value is 0 0.1095. Is 0 0.0195 unusual or not, guys? Unusual, yes, no? Anyone? Let me shout it out if you want. Not unusual. 
Right. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's unusual. It's less than. Is it five percent or less? Okay. If it's five percent, remember our guideline for unusual is typically five percent, five percent or less. Remember. So five percent or less. Is this five percent or less? Yes. If you want. Uh, right. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so round to the nearest penny if you want first, and then take a look at it. That might be the easiest way to do it. Um, except for remember that if it, if you're right on it, you gotta look at the above or below. Um, okay, good. So the p-value is 0 0.020, two percent. Um, so because the p-value is less than than alpha, we're gonna reject the null hypothesis. Rejecting the null hypothesis, so that means we have enough evidence um, to reject the claim that the means are the same. Or you can say enough evidence that at least one differs, either one. Um, so remember I talked about how a, um, chapter 11, you could always use the word reject and use H1 as your claim, or H0 as your claim, excuse me, H0 as your claim. Chapter 10 is H1. Chapter 11 is H0. So 11, 11, uh, 1, 1 goes with 0, and then 1, 0 goes with 1. Um, so chapter 11 goes with H0. H0, you can always use H0 as your claim for the exams. Homework will be different, but for the exams, it's always going to be H0. So you can always say enough evidence to reject claim means are the same. You can always do that one for, um, for the test. Homework, again, will be a little bit different. It's going to vary depending upon what your, your claim is going to be. All right, so um, let's do one together. Miles per gallon. So summer samples automobiles. Um, Rizzo, why don't you read this one? Go ahead. A researcher wishes to see if there is a difference in the fuel economy for city driving for three different types of automobiles. Small automobiles, sedans, and luxury automobiles. He randomly sampled four small automobiles, five sedans, and three luxury automobiles. The miles per gallon for each is shown at alpha equals 0 0.05. That's the claim that there is no difference among the means the data are shown. Great. So here I have three different categories, right? This is one variable, automobiles. I only have one variable, um, and they are automobiles. Uh, my data is means, um, so that's one way of knowing, right? I have three or more means. You see, see it says difference among the means and talks about means here. If you have means and you have three or more of them going on, then that's ANOVA. That's one way of telling from the words. Another way of telling is looking at this, it looks like it could maybe be a table, right? So it looks like a table, like a matrix, except you only have categories across the top, not along the sides. A table will have categories along the sides and the top, both, always, right, because these are just counts. So you'll have, um, if it's a table, then you'd have categories along the sides and the top. Means is always gonna, only going to have one or the other, either along the top or along the side, not both. Okay, so that's, again, one of the ways of telling these apart, because that's the hardest thing to do is telling, telling Figure out what an ANOVA is. It's going to have three lists of numbers and just one variable. Right? So these are all the same variable. Small, small cars, sedans, luxury cars. Okay. So first, state the hypothesis, identify the claim. H0 is mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3. Then I'm going to, H1 is going to be at least one mean differs. That's it. We're good there. Okay, so far? So you guys are writing this in, right, under, under your, this page? Because the page you're turning in next class. Um, and then find alpha. Alpha is 0.05. That's it. Done. Alpha equals 0.05. Nothing else. Then, step three, compute the p-value. So we're going to put the first group into list one, second group into list three, third group into list Sorry, second group into list two, third group into list three, and then we're going to do stat test ANOVA of L1, comma, L2, comma, L3. Don't forget the comma in between, you're going to get an error. All right, so let's do it. 
Yeah, let get your calculator. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Practice. Here we go. Turn it on. Clear. Stat. Edit. Now I'm going to clear all my um, clear enter. Clear out all my tables so I don't have them in there already because that's kind of cheating. So everyone has your calculator. Get to your lists and then type these in 36, 44, 34, 35. And then double check. Ooh, I already made a mistake. That's 44. 44. Okay. 43, 35, 30, 29, 40, 29, 25, 25. And then I'm going to double check. Because, again, if you make a mistake here, you are just sunk. There's no going back. And just it's, it just takes uh, not even a minute, like 20 seconds to check your numbers. Great. I have them all in there. Stat, test, and then arrow up one. It's at the very bottom. ANOVA, right there at the very bottom. So just arrow up one, and you got it. Hit enter. I want L1, comma, L2, comma, L3. So second, L1, comma, above the seven, second, L2, comma, again, above the seven, second, L3. Enter. Boom. There it is. There's my p-value. 0.0375. Done. How easy is that? Super straightforward, right? Super, super, super easy. I'll show you one more time. Stat. Edit. Put your data into list one, list two, and list three. And then do stat. Test. Stat test, like we've seen before. And then arrow up one, just up one, because it takes you to the very bottom. The very bottom one is ANOVA. Hit enter. Second L1, comma, second L2, comma, second L3. Enter. Done. There you have it. P value right there. And again, watch out for that E. If it's larger than one, then you better watch out for that E negative something over on the side. So it's written right here. Hopefully it's in your, uh, write it down. Just write it down in your notes. But it is on the bottom of the, of the previous page. It's kind of at the bottom down here. We talked about what to do. And all you have to do is for your work, to show your work, just write down this. Stat, test, ANOVA, L1, L2, L3. That's it. And maybe if you want to, you can label these. You know, that might be nice if you label these L1, L2, L3, just so I knew which ones you put in where. But this is basically, this is showing your work right there. Just write that down. And then put p-value equals whatever it equals. Is or equals 0.375. That's it. That's all you have to do. Oops, that was shiver. You should probably write it better than that. This would not be difficult. Um, okay. So again, there's your lists. There's ANOVA, what you type in. And that's what you get, your p value. All right, so then last is you make your decision. So we're going to find that um, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And there's no picture for this. There's no picture you draw because you don't have a critical value. So you have to state p values less than alpha and maybe and, may, and also giving me the numbers, like give me both of this. p value 0 0.0375 is less than alpha 0 0.05. Right? So that's your reasoning. No picture, and so you're just going to write that. Summarize your results. I'm fine with you saying enough evidence to reject claim that means are the same. Or you could be more wordy and do what they did, enough evidence. So they're saying that they were different. So that would, so your homework might have you do something like this. There's enough evidence to support the claim that there's a difference among the means because they, somewhere along the wording was that the means differ. So they were saying it's H1. But for the exam, like I said, for the exam, it's always going to be H0. So enough evidence to reject claim that the means are the same. Totally works. So are you guys done with that? Um, this is the 
summary of all the steps, right, just so you have it. Step one, H naught is mu one equals mu two equals mu three, however many means you have. H one would be at least one differs. Find alpha, just write down alpha. You have to really find it, it's there. And then compute your p-value by inputting into list one, list two, and list three, and then doing stat test ANOVA. Make a decision. Um, in this case, we're going to reject the null hypothesis because my p-value is less than alpha. And then summarize your results. Professor, I thought you had said that for chapter 11, 11. that h naught would always be the claim. Yes. Um, for me, for me, for you, H0 will do the same. For the homework, it could be H1 or H0, either one. So the homework is a okay. different animal. But for me, for the exam, it's always going to be H0. Thank you for um, pointing that out. Okay, that is it. Have a great weekend. Um, don't forget to work on Lab 10. Watch those videos work on Lab 10 because um, that way if you have questions about it, you can bring it, bring it on Tuesday when it's due so that you can – um, you know, have time to get it done before the, you know, before the late date, which would be the following Thursday, because we only have one more week. We've got two more classes. That's it. Thanks. Have a great weekend, you guys, too.